First news. Melania just made shock announcement to Navy that even stunned Trump, look what he did right after, tweet the president and his wife have found themselves in the middle of some interesting controversy lately. Videos of them have been posted showing the first lady smacking his hand away from holding it. Which many liberals have argued indicates they have a fake or strained marriage. Some have even argued she is a battered wife despite the negligent proof to sustain that theory. Meanwhile trying to compare the Trump's marriage to that of the former presidents. But after a recent speech of the First Ladies those insinuations have been proven wrong. The First Lady gave a speech at a military base in Italy on Saturday where she discussed the sick children she's met in the Middle East as well as meeting the Pope while on their overseas tour. Mentioning how she will never forget working with them. She was met with applause and laughter. Her speech is unique because she is known for not ordinarily making public comments. Via Daily Mail, Melania Trump has proudly signed off from her first foreign trip as First Lady before walking to Air Force One hand-in-hand -hand with the President. In a rare speech for Mrs. Trump, the First Lady addressed U.S. military personnel at a naval base in Italy on Saturday afternoon ahead of the trip back to Washington with Donald Trump. The First Lady, dressed in a black custom-made Dolce & Gabbana dress with button embellishments, said she would never forget the women and children she met during her nine days on the road in Europe and the Middle East. The trip took the Trumps to Saudi Arabia, Israel, Belgium, and Italy where Melania spent time with Pope Francis and at various children's hospitals. It has been a great trip and many strides have been made, Mrs. Trump said. My husband worked very hard on behalf of our country and I'm very proud of him. This trip has also been incredible for me as First Lady. The 47-year-old said she was honored and blessed to have been granted an audience with Pope Francis, and she shared stories of her time spent with sick children in various hospitals. This trip for me has been very special and I will never forget the women and children I met, she told the crowd. Melania Trump has kept an abnormally low profile as she has remained living in New York until her son Baron Trump finishes school in June. They will be permanently moving into the White House as soon as he finishes his school term. Meanwhile, she has cut back on public appearances and speeches appearing at very few functions. That is expected to change upon her moving to Washington, D.C. The overseas trip brought the first family to various countries such as Saudi Arabia, Israel, Belgium, and Italy. In part of her speech Melania Trump said, It has been a great trip and many strides have been made. My husband worked very hard on behalf of our country and I'm very proud of him. This trip has also been incredible for me as First Lady. This trip for me has been very special and I will never forget the women and children I met. I also want to take a moment to thank you all for the sacrifices you make on behalf of our country. To the families who endure time apart or constant time apart, your sacrifices do not go unnoticed. The speech was given to celebrate Memorial Day activities in remembrance of the soldiers we have lost overseas fighting wars. The First Lady could be seen wearing a respectable and conservative black body dress while professional photographers took photographs of her during the speech. Look as she interacts with her husband. Melania Trump recalled meeting a young boy while working with the Pope in the Vatican on Wednesday. She described drawing pictures with him as well as younger children in Brussels. The First Lady mentioned how one child even gave her a drawing that read We are all the same. While in Israel she also worked with the Prime Minister's wife Sarah Netanyahu aiding sick children of both Muslim and Jewish heritage in one of the only parts of the territory where they can freely commingle. Something that is very out of the ordinary. She said, just hours after leaving, a young boy I spent time with found out he had received a new heart donor. Receiving that news is a moment I will never forget and I wish him a speedy recovery. One of the more noticeable parts of her speech was at the end. Pictures from the trip show her kissing, holding hands with, and hugging her husband. Despite media coverage of them being cold and distant towards one another. While liberals try to depict him as in a loveless marriage because they refuse to hold hands this trip shows just the exact opposite. The first couple are shown being affectionate and loving towards one another. This was the most shocking part of all. Actions speak louder than words and no matter what liberals say about the Trumps their actions are screaming. Their marriage is perfectly fine and they aren't going anywhere no matter how hard outsiders try to poke holes in their marriage. The fact that they have not dignified these failing marriage rumors with a response shows the kind of class they have as individuals. Something the former administration certainly never had.
Watch her speech below. Share this with your friends to show the truth about the First Lady and the President. Second news, Trump disappears in Israel for several hours. We just discovered the stunning reason why President Trump has had an extraordinary first overseas trip. He has visited Italy, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and even Brussels to name a few places. The President has met with the Pope, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Emmanuel Macron. The polls have indicated he has been getting a very good response from the public back home while he is abroad. While in Israel he reaffirmed the strategic alliance and friendship between Israel and the United States while meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He also became the first sitting president to visit the Western Wall. His wife also met with Netanyahu's. Despite the liberal narrative that the president is a xenophobic bigot and a sociopath who doesn't care about anyone else but himself, he took several hours out of his day to do something special for someone very special. Emily M. Barr is a 14-year-old Israeli girl who has been battling a rare form of cancer for several years now and her dying wish was to meet with President of the United States. The President took time out of his schedule to meet with her. Emily was staying at Ratchashay Leviticus Ratchashay Lef is one of the country's top pediatric cancer centers. Shimei Gassade, director of Ratchashay Lef, took the opportunity to take a picture with the President and Emily during their visit. During the meeting, the young girl reportedly told the president how she had hoped she could visit the White House one day and be successful enough to do business with him. While the president wished her a speedy recovery and healthiness and described the difficulties of being president, he reportedly was very moved by the exchange. The trip to Israel only lasted for 27 hours yet the president took time out of his schedule to meet with Emily, indicating it was not about the fanfare but about genuinely making a difference in this young girl's life. Whereas the former administration took every opportunity to make a public ordeal out of little acts of kindness. The private nature of this meeting shows not only the bias of the mainstream media for not reporting on it but also the genuine nature of the president's good deed. However, the mainstream liberal media did not report on this. Instead choosing to report on how he didn't hold hands with his wife and how Emmanuel Macron reportedly shook hands with Angela Merkel before the president on purpose. Unfortunately. The truth is much better than the false reality the mainstream media has depicted. Which is that the president deeply cares about people which is why he took time out of his day to meet Emily. Look at the letter that Emily had written for him. This meeting highlights an amazing trip. Not only was the meeting with Emily amazing but so was the overall trip. While visiting the Prime Minister said the following about Donald Trump and the United States, we had a terrific discussion today. And when I say terrific, it encompasses everything. We can talk about deregulation, we can talk about economics. I think we quote each other. We understand each other and so much of the things that we wish to accomplish for both our countries. But I want to thank you especially today for your deep commitment to Israel's security, its well-being, and its future. I have no doubt that, as we work together, you and I, the alliance between our countries will grow ever stronger. I want you to know how much we appreciate the change in American policy on Iran, which you enunciated so clearly just an hour ago. I want you to know how much we appreciate your bold decision to act against the use of chemical weapons in Syria. And I want to tell you also how much we appreciate the reassertion of American leadership in the Middle East. He continued, I also look forward to working closely with you to advance peace in our region because you have noted so succinctly that common dangers are turning former enemies into partners. And that's where we see something new and potentially something very promising. It won't be simple. But for the first time in many years and, Mr. President, for the first time in my lifetime I see a real hope for change. The Arab leaders who you met yesterday could help change the atmosphere, and they could help create the conditions for a realistic peace. These are all great signs on your historic visit. It's a visit that I think has echoed down the ages, because the great Abraham Lincoln is reported to have said that there was no city on earth he so much desired to see as Jerusalem. Well, Mr. President, Donald, there's no city on earth where you are more welcome than right here with us in Jerusalem. Welcome to Jerusalem. Welcome to Israel. The trip was successful on all accounts. Emily will surely never forget. The third news. Melania saved huge surprise for Trump on final day of first overseas trip, look what the camera caught.
this is the true definition of class. Our First Lady Melania Trump made a huge splash during her last night in Italy. She was wearing an outfit fit for a goddess. She wore a shimmering high-neck silver dress and matching shoes by Dolce & Gabbana to attend a concert by the La Scala Philharmonic Orchestra at the ancient Greek theater of Tarmina, which she attended with her husband, President Donald Trump, on Friday night. Although Dolce & Gabbana is being boycotted by the left, because we all know that's the only way the left can win. By boycotting and bully tactics, Dolce and Gabbana have stood their ground and are honored to dress our first lady. What a contrast to what he had for the past eight years with Michelle Obama. No designer was boycotted nor bullied out of dressing her. Although she wasn't proud of her country until her husband Barack Hussein Obama was nominated, every designer was dying to dress her. These were only designers though, not miracle workers. Doesn't matter how good the dress is, if there is no class in the person wearing it, it just doesn't work. No wonder no one abroad respected us during the Obama years. We were the laughing stock of the world. Because of our policies brought on by Barry Obama and because of the classless first lady. The New York Times reports, these days, every time I sit down to write about the clothes worn by a political figure, I have to take a deep breath. I wrote this week about the image engineering of the First Lady, Melania Trump, as she accompanied her husband on his first trip abroad, and I know pretty soon the hate tweets are going to start flooding in. You idiot, why are you writing about what they wear? How dare you normalize them? Oh, right, clothes are so much more important than the budget, you airhead. And so on. The reactions have become more polarized, and angrier, over the last few months, as most things have. But I have been looking at the sartorial tactics of people in the public eye for over a decade, and the mad chorus the complaint that it is somehow a waste of time or unseemly to devote thinking to what a serious public figure wears is much the same. I get a lot of stick to skirts, honey. But what has always interested me most about clothes is not their pure form, as it exists in a vacuum or in the echo chamber of the fashion world, glossy magazines do a great job of covering that. Rather, I want to interrogate their life on the body, and in the world. Every garment a type, a dress, a pair of socks or shoes is a communication device of varying power and clarity, and we choose how to use those tools to sway those looking at us. After all, since long before Queen Elizabeth I widened her face and exaggerated her ruff to transform herself into a living myth, leaders have been using clothes to influence opinion. For all of us, what we choose to wear in the morning telegraphs a message about who we are. And for those in the public eye, this effect is simply multiplied a hundredfold is it sillier to acknowledge the strategy behind appearance, or to pretend such influences don't exist. It may be embarrassing to recognize that what someone wears can affect your judgment, but it does, leather leggings and sneakers can make a member of the establishment seem accessibly cool, a red tie taps into memories of morning in America, rolled up shirt sleeves indicate hard work. At the very least, wardrobe choices can subconsciously make you relate to public figures in a more personal way, which could then tempt you to give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to motivations and policy making or they may alienate you entirely. Barack and Michelle Obama were masters of the sartorial statement, and a wave of politicians who have come since, including Justin Trudeau and Emmanuel Macron and their wives, have learned from the Obama's example, strategically abandoning their ties on occasion, daring to wear Star Wars socks promoting homegrown designers. Donald Trump, with his hair and his tan and his devotion to the overlong tie and boxy suit, uses his style to weave a different story. But, in the current White House, it is Melania whose clothes may be the most telling. Not because she is a woman, but because since the election she has rarely spoken, retreating to her penthouse in New York and emerging last week on the global stage in a series of strict, battle-ready outfits. It's not that what she wears matters more than world peace or freedom of the press or trade policy or any piece of legislation of course not. And the Times covers those issues with dedication. But one kind of analysis does not obviate the other, and can, in fact, elucidate it. We scour her wardrobe for clues as to who she is as a person and how she sees her role, where her values lie and how she will represent the country on the world stage. Where her husband's, perhaps unstated, Priorities like The vehicles may be superficial, but they are also broadly accessible, and that makes them powerful. 
and power is a subject I don't think any of us would dismiss. According to the left-wing reg, the New York Times Melania Trump wears battle-ready outfits. Really? And why is that? What makes our first lady want to wear battle-ready outfits? Could it be that regs such as yours have done nothing but put her down since the election of our president? You have criticized everything about her. To the point of even saying she isn't a good mother. While of course you regs did nothing but fan at the ghetto trash that was Michelle Obama with her dictating what our children can and can't eat at school while she would have chefs fly in from Chicago to make her a damn pizza. You and the media should be ashamed of yourselves. If you are proud of our first lady Melania, please share. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment because we want to hear your voice and thank you for watching.